what is up everybody it's me Gina Bianca and I'm so excited to share with you all today an amazing black box dye to gray color correction I told myself I wasn't gonna take any more of these guests because they do take years off of my life but I had this guest reach out to me and I'm not sure if it's like black black or dark brown but she's been box dyeing her hair for years she's been gray since she was really young and she's looking to go to a gray transition so that she doesn't have to do the box dye anymore. I'm really excited because I tried to talk her out of it at first. I was like, your hair is not gonna feel great. We might not get to the result. My rate is $1,500 for the day. I gave her all of my boundaries and she was still ready to move forward. Um, one moment during the consultation, she was like, what if it takes less time while I get a refund? And I was like, no, absolutely not. Because as a hairstylist, I could have booked five or six people and made way more than $1,500 in a day. And she was like, I never even considered that. Thank you for telling me. So she's been like so far a really nice dream client who is respectful and understands. So I was like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> so I'm really excited. Um, I'm gonna take a different approach today. I'm gonna be using some different products. I was inspired by Jack Martin. He does these beautiful gray transitions. So I kind of went on his page and like looked at some of the stuff that he does. And I'm gonna be using mostly Redken today. And if you know me, uh, you know that <laughs> I like have never used a Redken product. I like was a Paul Mitchell baby and I just, don't use a lot of Redken. So I'm excited today. It's gonna to be something different. I'm also gonna be working with Rusk Color Eliminate. So let me go show you what I have set up and then we'll get started. All right, here's a quick clip of everything that I used. Uh, definitely trying some new formulas today. And I say I'm excited like 200 times on this video and I think it was because I was really nervous uh, to go out of my comfort zone, but I'm glad that I did because there were some standouts. All right, so I'm gonna start the service with the Rust Color Eliminate. This is an actual color remover. I know that in some videos I've used the Malibu treatments, but this is like a heavy duty color remover. And I don't always do this. Sometimes I'll go straight to the lightener, but because there's so many years of box dye, I really don't wanna leave the entire service up to the lightener. Because if I go in and straight foil, I could have banding and I wanna just like, get as much of the color out as possible because she's coming all the way here. I think she's from Mass or something, but she's coming all the way here and I just wanna take the extra step. And I have a 12 hour day booked for her. So right now it is 7.45, we're setting up, we're gonna start at eight and we're gonna go right in with the color remover. The next thing that I'm gonna do is wash, dry. I'm gonna use K18 on her. I've never used this before, so we'll see if it really stands up to the height. A lot of people say it does, I've never used it. Um, so I'm going to use K18 with everything, um, and this video is not sponsored. I just have never used it and want to try it and show you. Next, I'm going to use, I'm going to try it, I've never used this lightener either, the Redken Flash Lift with the Bonder. This is what Jack Martin used, so I'm just going to try it out. And I'll give you honest reviews on everything after. Um, and then I pulled the formulas that he uses most frequently. So most frequently he'll go in and tone out with the 10P, 10VB with clear and tone out the yellow. And then he goes in with 10T with clear. So my goal is to get her as light as possible. I'm gonna try to do treatments in between, see um, if I can make the K18 work for me. And then I'm gonna wash her, dry her, and low light her. So I'm low lighting her with the uh, color gels from Redken. So I'm set up to win. I went out of my way to set myself up to win because I do have product that I can use, but I was like, what can I do to just set myself up to win? You know, this girl's coming all the way here. I really want to get it done in as close to one day as possible for her, but I know that when she has to come back, she's going to have to come back for some kind of maintenance on it at least a few times, um, but maybe she won't. You know, so I'll follow up and let you guys know. But this is what we're going to use. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. All right. So this is our beautiful guest. She was more a uh, level five than a uh, black box dye. So forgive my introduction. Uh, she's more like a level five. She's been box dyeing for a while. Well, forever. And she pulls through oftentimes when she box dyes. So there's just a lot of buildup in there. Her hair health is overall great and she's got this gorgeous silver coming through that we are going to do everything in our power to match uh, what God gave her. <laughs> so let's see how it goes. 
All right, so I just met my guest. She's amazing, and I'm so excited to get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with the K-18. So this treatment, K-18, it, there's a lot of hype around it in our industry right now. It's like a dream miracle treatment. So many people are um, obsessing over it. And it's a treatment that we're going to do on your hair in between before every chemical service. So I'm going to do okay. it before your color remover. And then I'm going to do the treatment after the color remover. And then before the lightning and after the lightning. And then while I'm low lighting you, I'm gonna do it as well. So I'm gonna do it through every step to just maintain the integrity of your hair. So I wet down the hair first and then I did a few sprays of the K18 uh, professional hair mist on each section. So I took like two inch sections, shook it up and I sprayed like three to five sprays per section. And then you let it process for about four minutes, power dry and you're ready to go. Typically this would be like too much time uh, if someone told me I had to do all of this, I'd be like, oh, I don't know, it's going to take forever, but it's like literally four minutes and it made a huge, huge difference. And it's great that the mask after is a leave-in mask. You don't have to like, you know, process it and then wash it out, which is what I'm normally used to. But this was definitely a game changer and a big standout in this service. I do not know how healthy her hair would have been without it. Go K18. Yeah, I was really impressed with the entire... Uh, outcome using this product. I'm not easily impressed. I feel like a lot of the bond builders and stuff are exactly the same and I don't see like a huge wow factor, like huge, crazy, miraculous results. But this one, I definitely did. So I put the link below to get certified in K18. That was the next step that I took and I'm really glad I learned more about it now that I'm gonna be using it. Okay, so we just started the K18 treatment and I just printed one of our multi-step color agreements. So this is available in Mastermind. If you're not in my Mastermind group, you should consider joining, it's amazing. It has all of my handbooks, education, coaching, a lot, right? But this agreement is our multi-step color agreement. So it's gonna ask her tons of questions and then give her all of the uh, you know terms and conditions. And she's gonna sign that and make sure that she understands everything. Amazing, so now we're doing the Rusk Color Eliminate. Another incredible standout during the service. I'm definitely going to be using these from now on. I've even extended my booking time for corrections to 12 hours. It's a non-negotiable if you have box dye or dark hair and wanna go lighter. Ashley, our manager, had time to help me. So as you can see, she's here with me to help me get this on. So I love Ego Heads. We have the hose nozzles. We have the pings. Obsessed with these. And they're so sturdy. Like I've had mixers in the past that just break after like a couple months. These have been holding strong. They're amazing. And I do have a code for you guys. I'll put it below so that you can get your Ego Heads because they really do help save on color. They help with the consistency of the color and they help make your salon more eco-friendly. They're amazing. Great. So here we go. And Ashley applied way faster than me. I guess I'm a rookie. Um, she's a savage. She's so amazing at hair and education. Go follow her at Get Schooled by Schlee. She also contributes to my mastermind group and helps create amazing content. The last video she did was the science of hair color. And she actually like broke down this color remover um, and really kind of helped me understand even more why they're so important. She's just full of knowledge and so amazing. And she'll explain a little bit more about the color remover shortly. But here we go. We mixed everything together for, uh, per manufacturer's instructions, which I only recommend when you do services like this. You want to make sure you're mixing it exactly to manufacturer's instructions. Uh, we went through and we're applying in like two-inch sections and making sure it's really, really, really saturated and really working it through. We got everything on, um, I would say in about five to seven minutes, and then we processed it. We ended up doing this twice, so it made a huge difference in removing that color. You know, she's been, you know, coloring her hair for 20 years, but obviously there's not 20 years on her head right now. She's got probably, I'd say like eight years of hair on her head right now, assuming, you know, her hair grows normally fast. But eight years of box dye is a lot of box dye. So, and a lot of layering and overlapping. So if you think about it, the color remover can probably take out four years, then the lightener only has to take out four years. 
And instead of just going in with Lightner and trying to use the sheer power of bleach, I mean, for lack of a better term, this is just gonna remove some of that color for us so that we don't have to push it as hard in the lightening process. So all in all, it was a great decision. I'm definitely, like I said, I'm gonna be uh, using these from now on. I love the Rusk one, it's amazing. The Color Eliminate is what it's called and they're pretty affordable. Just keep a couple of them in your cabinet because you never know when you're gonna need them and they're pretty fast. Like it doesn't take a ton of time. Uh, you just have to follow the instructions exactly and your hair will be okay to lighten and process right after. And it's very, very gentle. Although it makes a huge impact, it is very, very gentle and it's safe to lighten right after. So this is after processing for about 20 minutes under heat. And as you can see, the hair is getting lighter and lighter and it's so exciting. And uh, you know, this is where you start to get really excited about color movers. You're like, oh my gosh, look what it look what it has done. Oh my God. But if it's your first time using a color remover, don't get that excited because this is not her natural level. We just went in and now we're applying it again. Uh, and you can apply it on damp hair for the second application. But what the processor, the color remover is doing right now is it's going in and it's shrinking all of the color molecules so small that the eye can't even see them. So there's more than the eye can see, okay? So it shrunk all of the molecules and it made them small enough so that they can kind of slip out of the hair and down the drain. And this second process is gonna do the same thing. The step two of the color remover, which you do at the very, very end after doing the color remover, however many times you wanna do it, I recommend doing it two times um, if it needs it. The second, vol the second uh, part of the treatment is doing a 10 volume color rinse. And that's gonna make the molecules expand so you can see what's really there. So you know how you asked me earlier if I think it's because of social media that so many of these things are like known? Mm -hmm. It's just crazy that like it, back in my day, like 12 years ago, yeah. we didn't share formulas. Really? That was a no-no. Like mm. we did not share formulas. Wow. And now people share everything. Yeah. Huh. It's crazy how things change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was, was it just like a... No, like you can't have my formula. That's what makes me different, you know? And now people are sharing so generously mm -hmm. their formulas. Also because people like want to get like sponsored or like yeah. reposted by these yep. brands. So you're more likely to get reposted if um Yeah. Brands rely on user-generated content. Yep. Yeah. They rely on it. It's what they need to survive. All right, so we're back again and we're gonna rinse for five minutes. Make sure everything is all out and then we're gonna do the third step. All right, so we went ahead and we rinsed off step one and two. We used really nice warm water and we rinsed that for five minutes and we even did a little sniff test <laughs> to make sure that we were getting out all of that um, thioglycolate. So the dye molecules are shrunken and now we're using the clarifying shampoo to remove those dye molecules. They're small and tiny and we need to get them out of the cortex and out of that cuticle layer. And this is one of the most important parts. You've got to spend your time agitating the hair and really rinsing out that those molecules. Perfect. All right, so we're applying the step three at this point. So it's just a processing lotion. It's a really low level developer. And what it's going to do is show us now the true color outcome. So if there's any of those dye molecules that are still trapped within that cortex or that cuticle, it will redarken slightly. So right now what you're seeing at the top is just the raw lift. And then what we're going to see here once we put on this 10 volume is the actual lift. You see how many of those dye molecules we got out and how much lighter we got the hair. So you can use a clip, but why use a clip when you have a friend? Mm -hmm. Teamwork makes the dream work. 
So we are just working it. I'm going through all of the areas and making sure I have full saturation of that processing lotion. Making sure everything is saturated and scrubbing it because any dye molecules that are there, I want them to show themselves. I want to see them. I want to know exactly what I'm working with. And just for reference, I ended up using two boxes of the Color Eliminate. I had a little bit extra left over, but I used almost two boxes on this one guest doing it twice. And I saturated a lot. Like I did not want to miss anything, so I was not stingy with the product at all. But like I said, they're very affordable. Um, they're not like a crazy price for you to keep in your cabinet or keep in your back bar just in case you need them and they will make your life so much easier. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Again, I said it in the beginning of the video, all of my color correction services will include this step going forward. So now that everything is on and saturated, you can really see the dye molecules starting to expand and I'm kind of just squeegeeing it into the hair. I'm not wringing it out. I'm just like squeezing it into my hand and then letting the hair kind of suck it up a little bit. You can see the hair starting to get darker and that is to be expected. So we're just gonna work through some of the K18 mask before we blow dry. So I just used a couple pumps of the K18, worked it through. I look so heavy handed, I promise she's okay. <laughs> so here are the results after two Rusk Color Eliminate treatments. And I believe it took overall like two, two and a half hours. You can see a huge difference. And I would much rather lighten the canvas on the right than the canvas on the left. So I think that this process, plus the K18, keeping it so healthy, was essential for us to get as light as we did. It looks gorgeous. I'm so happy with how smooth and shiny it came out and how much color was taken out. All right, so here we go. We're moving on using the Redken Flash Lift. I've never used this before. It does have a bonder inside, because why not? So I'm going ahead and mixing that. I like to mix a lot of color at a time because I move very quickly and I also um, saturate a lot, especially during correction. So I went through that whole bag of lightener and then I think one of my colleagues, uh, half of a half a bag that she had because I wanted to use the same product through the entire head. I had other lightener, but I was like, I really want to see how it comes out with the same lightener throughout the entire process. So I used that entire bag on one guest plus half of another bag. And I'm mixing in everything to make sure it's evenly distributed. And I'm using my standard sectioning that I show you guys in a lot of my videos. And it looks great. All right, foiling start time, 11.15. Let's see if I still got it. <laughs> All right, so we're going right ahead and we're starting center back and we're gonna go in and do some slices. So I just went in, my section sizes are very, very small. I'm using 10 volume, which is higher than I normally start with, but I was kind of following some mentorship as I said before from Jack Martin, he always posts that he uses 20 volume. So I went up a little bit, but not to the full 20 volume. Maybe she would have gotten lighter if I did, but I'm really happy with how healthy her hair came out. And I have no issue doing another session, especially when her hair is super healthy. So I was comfortable doing it with 10 volume to start and then I worked my way up as I moved toward the uh, end of the service. So I just kept going, taking small, small, small sections and just feathering into her gray that was already present. So I just went through, glued all of it on, feathered into the gray and then I was horizontal for a minute and I was like, nope, I don't like this. So I went back to my diagonal sectioning that I normally do 
I glued where I wanted saturation to begin, which is right past that gray. Like literally I want it transitioning right into it. I don't want to leave a band. So I glued very, very high and then just feathered up. And I was saturating very, very heavily. I feel like watching this video after the fact and doing a voiceover, it doesn't really reflect how much I was saturating. Uh, maybe it will in upcoming clips, but I was literally pouring the lightener on her head. I was like oversaturating because I did not want the chance of a spot or a band or a stubborn area. So I did not skimp out on product at all. And I think that really helped to get her light. So small sections, lots of product. That's why color corrections, you know, we need to have a higher rate for them because the product usage alone is really hard to make these services profitable, you know? A lot of stylists don't even like to do them because they aren't that profitable because of how much you use. I think on her, I ended up spending about 400 in product. I had to pay my assistant um, so we can actually get it done in one day. She was helping me for most of the video. Um, and she took this video for you guys. So make sure you go show her some love. She is amazing. So as you can see, I'm taking two foils. I'm using the Framar Big Papa foils. I love them. These are the foils cut in half and I will go in with two foils, apply and then take the bottom foil and put it right on top so I don't have to keep reaching. This is just something I've always done since I like really got into foiling like 10 years ago. It just helps with my speed. So if you like that trip uh, tip, try it out. Definitely helps pick up the pace a little bit for sure. I also like their Big Daddy brush. That's like my favorite brush to foil with. I also like the Power Painter. Um, and I'm also using my YS Park clips and combs. I use the long tail foiling comb and the shark clips. I have them for sale at my events. So if you ever come to one of my classes, I always have them for sale there at show pricing. And I'll put a link below for you as well. And I'll give you my code. It's Gina 10 for free shipping. So if you want to update some of your tools, those are my preferred tools. I'll also put my link for Framar below for you as well. So I'm just working up the head here. Keep going. It's a lot of foiling, a lot of foiling. Gluing where I want saturation to begin, feathering up, teeny, teeny, tiny sections, lots of product to get the maximum lift and saturation. Okay, so now we're finished with the bottom and the right side. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Praise Jesus. Looks amazing. Got a ways to go, but you're definitely doing great. Amazing. Wowie. Looks so clean. So we keep foiling and foiling and foiling and foiling. You get the picture, right? So I'm just going all the way up her head on a diagonal. Doesn't really matter what section angle you take because it's all gonna be lightened. But this is the most efficient way that I like to do a platinum card just because of how I normally foil. So however you normally foil, whatever you find the most comfortable and efficient, it's okay. You know, I wouldn't go on a vertical because it might pull too hard and hang, but you know, if you platinum card a little bit differently, that's okay. Do what's best for you. Take all the education that you are consuming and adjust it to become your own. You already are amazing. You already do amazing techniques. You already are talented. You know how to do hair. Your experience is going to be what sets you apart. So go ahead and go crazy. Just remember those small sections, even saturation, and make sure you're very diligent with your work because when you're doing processes like these, like we're five hours in and your shoulders start to get tired, you start to get tired. You want to make sure you eat enough. You want to make sure you, you know, I was drinking Celsius in this video. Just make sure you have something to uh, nourish you, you know. So I had like some, uh, you know, like oat bites. I had like snacks along the way to like make sure that 
I wasn't draining on energy because if you get tired, you get lazy, right? So you have to have the endurance for these kinds of services. And I have another video that I'll link below. It's like a video for clients, like what to prepare for, for a color correction. And one of the things like endurance, you know, a lot of stylists don't have the endurance to do these services. There's a lot of things that go into them, like mental stability, decisiveness, emotional stability. Like a lot of people cannot handle something like this. And that's not bad. You know what I mean? Some people just do not want to do comp complicated, complex and stressful services like this. And that's OK. That's why it's a specialty. It's a specialty. It should cost more. It's way more stressful. And there's so much that goes into it, along with skill, all of those things. A lot of it is like endurance, indecisiveness, and emotional stability, because sometimes it gets really, really scary. Um, yeah, you can see my kombucha in the background. I'm drinking kombucha, eating some oat bites, making sure I'm saturated, lots of water, hydrated, lots of water, not saturated, hydrated. Um, but yeah, we fast forwarded kind of through all the foils. I'm using that double foil trick, but just dragging down, making sure it's saturated, making sure there is a pound of lightener on each section. Her whole head must have weighed five pounds after. I felt bad for her, but she really held strong. Um, she had like a little neck too. I was like, are you okay? I feel so bad. But she held so strong. She crushed it. She was a really great guest and a pleasure to do business with. And she is coming back for another session. She understands it's a process and she has been great to work with. So really looking forward to seeing her at her next session. And we will film it for you so you can see the next steps. Because I think that sessions like these the completion is key, like to see the entire process is key. And it just helps stylists get the confidence that they need to do these services. And it helps guests understand more what goes into them. So the more we educate, the more we share, the more authentic and vulnerable we can be with our work, the better. So really excited. And yeah, I was a little bit nervous to share this because, you know, with Chris Appleton, Kim Kardashian's hair, like all the hate that went out to Kim for like not having perfect hair. I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous to share because like, I'm not Chris Appleton, like I'm not doing Kim's hair. But every color correction I do, it's like opening my heart up to criticism. Um, and it's really hard to share stuff like this because it's not perfect and color corrections just aren't perfect. So I think we need to normalize that, share more about them and really support each other as an industry because that's how we elevate together. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I got my foiling shot. The back was not ready to come out anyway, which was good. We were planning on pulling them. But we didn't. We just let it all process, got some pics, and let her hang out. So I ended up rinsing around 2 o'clock. And if I can go back in time, I might have let her process a little bit longer. But my gut at the time said her hair has been in foils for a really long time. This is 10 volume. Um, I want to just make sure it's as healthy, healthy, healthy as possible. So I just went with my gut. A lot of the foils looked really, really good. Some of them were a little yellow, but nothing like too crazy. Um, but I definitely needed to start rinsing the back. So I started to rinse the back and immediately as I'm pulling, I knew I was going to have to lighten again. So I know some of you might be like, why would you lighten that again? It's so light, but for a guest that wants silver gray, there just cannot be any yellow present in the hair at all. And even though it's nice and white with the lightener on it, there was definitely some yellow in there. And I know she wants gray. If I could go back in time, knowing everything I know now, I would have done a darker gray, but I was kind of following recommended formulas, which honestly, like I don't recommend. That's why I don't go crazy sharing formulas because not every formula is right for every single guest. So I ended up using a lot of clear in my pre-toner because I had never used Redken before. And I was just kind of following like what Jack Martin usually does, which he's amazing. This is no shade to Jack Martin. This is amazing. Or he's amazing. Nothing, nothing, nothing against Jack Martin. But I kind of followed his formulas in hope of it getting that like silvery, silvery result. And yes, like she got pretty silvery. 
but I wish I didn't use as much clear in my pre-toner because I was a little nervous and I was using new products, right? So I was like, I don't want it to be like too purple, whatever, whatever. So if I could go back in time, my own, and every time I do a color correction, I have some regrets, you know what I mean? Not like horrible regrets, but I have some feelings of I would have done this better. I would have done this differently. And that's why corrections, I feel like are such a strong service to do. It's a good service for you to do because you learn so much. So as you can see, I'm rinsing off the lightener and it's warm. So we lightened it again. Go. All right. So it's 2.07. And I just pulled the back and she's like outside of the banana. So I pulled the back, it feels perfect. Feels perfect. So I'm gonna go in and hit the back with 20 volume flash lift and hopefully move it past that outside the banana to inside the banana. By the time that's done processing, I'm hope, I hope I can pull the rest of the foils and then do the same thing in the front if needed. But I did bump up in the front to 15 and 20 volume, so we might not have to, so stay tuned. For this part of her hair, I went to the front on the iPad and I played one more time, because I had to lighten her one more time. I know, I'm hilarious. Um, but yeah, I'm lightening again, 20 volume flash lift, and I'm going through and just hitting it again, mostly in those darker spots, which was pretty much all of it. But as you can see, I'm brushing through the hair and it's so healthy. How? I don't know. Um, I was super surprised at how strong, healthy, uh, and amazing her hair felt because usually by this time you're like, okay, I really can't lighten it again. But I felt fully confident, 150% confident that I could lighten it again. And I did go up with 20 volume because I wanted the energy in the beginning. I didn't want to leave it on too long. I just wanted that energy to start working right away. So that's why I chose 20 for my developer. And then I ended up opening every single foil and hitting it again with 20 volume in hopes that everything would kind of catch up at the same time. I didn't want to let the back process and then have to do the same thing on the front, even though that's what I thought I was going to have to do. I ended up, instead of just taking a break and going in the back room, I ended up just keeping the labor intensive day going. And I ended up lightening in between every foil and it did buy us a lot of time. So if I didn't do that step, it would have taken probably two more hours, I think, like maybe an hour and a half longer, but I did keep us working on time by working straight through. I am wiping off the lightener first on most of them to go, and I just like literally wipe it off with my gloves, wipe it into a bowl, and then reapply. So this was a whole extra process that I think a lot of people don't really remember are included in color corrections until they get there and they're like, oh my God, I have to reapply and mix an entire bag of lightener. A lot of the time this isn't included in our estimate because we can't really know what's going to happen until it happens. That's why corrections need to be charged hourly and why it's really important to book enough time. Time is key. If I did not have a full day, this would not have happened. She would not have gotten this light. I would be stressed and have no time. All right, so we're in the home stretch. She lifted beautifully. I am doing a pre-toner to just pre-tone out some of the yellow orange. Most of it is pale yellow, but there's just the tiniest hint when it's all bunched together of yellow orange. So I chose 10P and 10BB equal parts with double the amount of clear. So one ounce, one ounce, two ounces of clear and four ounces of processing liquid. So I'm gonna pre-tone for 15 minutes. I'm gonna walk away, just let it pre-tone and then I'm gonna go over everything with the 10T. So I'll come back before I mix the 10T and show you. All right, so we're applying that, making sure it's very, very saturated all over. I'm like scrubbing it on her roots, scrubbing it on her ends, making sure everything is saturated. And again, I just wish I didn't use so much clear because it did not kick out as much of the yellow as I wanted it to. And it really did hinder the rest of the process. Like the, t the tea didn't show up as well. The low lights didn't show up as well. Um, I really wish I omitted some of the clear but I didn't. So that's the choice that I made uh, during the service. I let it sit for 15 and this is what we got. It looked beautiful. It's really not 
anything upsetting but I was hoping it would be more on like the whiter side and there was like this tiny tiny tinge of green that was like living in there so yeah if I could go back I would just use less clear okay thank god I have my BFM Ashley here she has walked me through and helped me formulate because I've never used Shade CQ before so we have been brain hurricaning what to do so I pre-toned her with 10 BB 10 P and clear kind of did a little bit but it kind of like made the ends a little green so i ended up putting the 10 t over it to see what it would do process for like 18 minutes didn't do that much but then again it's a level 10. so now what i did is i blow dried her i k-18'd her um, with the mask blow dried her her hair feels perfect like i'm a little shocked about how perfect her hair feels. So I'm so happy about that. So now what we're doing is another process, which I already knew we were gonna do, but we are doing uh, seven, five BA, seven BA color lacquers, 10 volume, equal parts. That is my low light. I have my black brush for my low light. And then we're doing nine B as our mid light. And then on the ends, we're doing nine T or in the middle we're gonna do 9T. So she's gonna have three colors in there. We're gonna try to get rid of some of the greeniness that's in there. We might do another step after, but it's so slight. It's not anything crazy, super slight, but this all should make it work. And I'm really, really excited to see it. I don't know if you caught it, but in that last clip, I was like, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm like so nervous. Color corrections are nerve wracking. They're so nerve wracking. I was calm, cool, and collected on the surface, especially in front of my guest. But all I want is for it to be perfect. You know, I'm a perfectionist, but color corrections are not perfect. And I think it helps me grow as a person to do these services because you just learn so much along the way. So I'm going in, I'm doing a pretty, pretty heavy low light on her and I'm just mixing in those colors to like see what happens and see if I can give her some dimension, see if I can uh, make her grow out a little bit easier with these low lights. And I really just went in with a lot of faith. Even when I opened that foil, I was like, oh my God, it's blue, but it's going to be gray, right? So gray is blue. So, you know, I was, I was working it. Anybody watching this video probably is like, I'm never doing a gray transition, but they're kind of fun. I like doing them. I don't mind doing them. It's a different process every single time. Everybody's hair is different. Um, and I'm really happy with how it came out, especially for one session. And so was my guest. She absolutely loved it. She's coming back again for one more session. I'm going to lighten a little bit more warmth out of her hair and go a completely different direction with the toning process. So I'm excited. I'm actually excited, not nervous. <laughs> I always say I'm excited when I'm nervous. So maybe I'm a little nervous, but that's okay. So just finishing up that low light and get ready for the results. They're coming pretty soon. Okay, so the last step, I have nine T. I did an ounce and a half of nine T, half ounce of eight T with processing liquid on wet hair to address all the hair that was left out. There's barely any line of demarcation. The transition is gorgeous. So gorgeous. I'm going to go like a little higher. We're just giving her some waves. You can see how gorgeous that color looks.
So you got to see it in our dark salon lighting. This is the before. This is my first reaction to seeing the after on camera because I only have my phone videos. It looks good. I like it a lot. It was nice and smoky. I have a ring light a little bit further away from her. This is pretty close up with the ring light, but you got to see it in like the darker salon lighting with the ring light and with like a further away ring light. It looks really good. I definitely want to get her in for another session to pull out any warmth and tone her darker. So I hope that you love this video. Make sure you join my mastermind group if you want more education with me, especially business coaching. I love to support other artists. Thank you, Alexandra, for editing. Thank you, Ashley, for assisting me. And I'll see you all on the next one.